the sound of the bell cut through the rambunctious roaring of the crowd. Breathing heavily, Bill, the Black Devil Richmond, looked down at his fists. Yup. Bleeding. He touched the corner of his lip with his tongue. Yup. That's bleeding too. He squinted over at his opponent in the opposite corner. The bare-chested man was muscular, half his age and looked fresh as a daisy. The 51-year-old Bill could feel what felt like a heartbeat pulsating on the bruised right side of his face and realised that that side of the world had gone dark. He was blind in one eye. Bollocks, thought Bill as he walked out from his corner. This was going to be another long fight. This is King Caruso, the Black History Buff, and welcome to the Black History Buff podcast. Each episode will be going through another chapter from Black History and showcasing one of the amazing characters from Black History. You can find us on Instagram at Black History Buff 777 and at BHB Media 777, also on Instagram. So please kick back, relax. And enjoy today's show. When we think about black sports stars, we often go to names such as Muhammad Ali, Jackie Robinson, perhaps Kareem Abdul-Jabbar or even Jack Johnson. However, if we dig a little deeper and look a little harder, we might come across the story of Bill Richmond, the first black sports star. Bill Richmond was born on the 8th of August 1763 in Staten Island, which at the time was an outpost of the British colonies. His parents were both enslaved persons and Bill's prestigious talents would never have been discovered had a British soldier named Hugh Percy not convinced the brute keeping a young Bill captive to release him into his care. Bill's natural intelligence, wit and tenacity had struck a chord with Percy, who brought the 14-year-old Richmond to England with him and set him up as an apprentice cabinet maker in Yorkshire. It may be hard to believe this, but at that time, 1777, the number of black people living in Britain was fairly large, many having had their freedom restored to them in exchange for fighting against the American rebels in the War of Independence. However, less surprisingly, on entering Britain, they faced extreme racism. The smartly dressed, confident and literate Richmond was an instant target for the small-minded bigots of Britain, and a young Bill found himself in numerous bruising encounters and brawls as he defended himself from the insults thrown at him from the small-minded men of that time. It was during these encounters that Richmond began to hone his fighting talent as he handed out beating after beating to his racial abusers. In the words of one of the leading boxing writers of the day, Pierce Egan, Richmond taught his detractors that it was wrong to discriminate against a man on account of his country or his colour. Richmond's reputation as a man of honour and fighting prowess began to grow, and in 1795 he moved to London. Prize fighting was one of the leading sports in that era, and Richmond, feeling confident after years of handing out beatings in Yorkshire, spontaneously challenged seasoned veteran George Maddox to a match in January 1804. Richmond lost the bout in nine close rounds, with one brutalising blow opening up a dangerous cut over his left eye. Okay, so before we go any further, I need to explain that the sport Richmond was partaking in was bare-knuckle boxing. I want you to think about all the famous boxing matches you've ever seen or heard about. Ali versus Frazier, Tyson versus Holyfield, Fiori versus Kichlinko. Hell, even Rocky versus Ivan Drago. And throw all that in the bin. There were no gloves, no judges, and no points. Rounds lasted as long as they lasted, and fights could often go on for hours. If you were left standing at the end, you won. 
this was a brutal sport. And looking at it through modern eyes, you might wonder why Richmond, a moderately successful man in his own right, and at roughly 40 years old, might want to put himself through all that. But I believe that what fueled Richmond was the years of abuse that he endured. First as a boy in America, then as a young man in Yorkshire. A black man living in those times just had to take it with no chance of recourse and even lesser chance of justice. And so I believe that Richmond saw his own justice in the ring. After his punishing defeat, a less determined man would have possibly quit the sport. But in 1805, Richmond made a successful comeback defeating a Jewish boxer by the name of Yusup, who was left, air quotes, totally disfigured after six vicious rounds. Richmond quickly followed this with a win over Jack Holmes in another one-sided beating likened to, at the time, air quotes, a public slaughter. These and other victories opened up the possibility of a rematch with Richmond's nemesis, George Maddox, in 1809. The fight took place in August, and Richmond battered Maddox across a bloody 52 rounds. 52 rounds. 52 rounds. Do you know how much you must have to hate someone in order to fight them for 52 rounds? I can't think of anything I can do for 52 rounds. I don't even think I can think of anything I can do for two rounds. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Anyway, back to the show. At the end of the battle, his 52 rounds, Maddox was described as hideously disfigured, but all who watched the contest agreed that the skill and bravery of the two men went without question. Now, Wealthy from his winnings, reputation enhanced, Richmond wisely invested his money into property, becoming the owner and landlord of the Horse and Dolphin pub near Leicester Square. During this time, Richmond began to tutor other young fighters, one of whom was the young, gifted and black boxer Tom Molyneux, who under Richmond's tutelage went on to fight the British champion Tom Cribb in one of the most contested boxing bouts in British history. But I'll tell that story in another episode. Richmond, due to some financial losses, was eventually forced back into the ring. He fought a Jack Davis in 1814 and then in 1815 took on his riskiest fight when aged an unbelievably 51. Black really doesn't crack. He fought and defeated Tom Shelton, who was half his age. It was an epic battle with Richmond eventually defeating Shelton. Richmond, due to some financial losses, was eventually forced back into the ring. He fought a Jack Davis in 1814 and in 1815 took on his riskiest fight when aged an unbelievable 51. He fought and defeated Tom Shelton, who was half his age. It was an epic battle with Richmond eventually defeating Shelton. Again, according to boxing writers of the day, Richmond took a punishing blow from Shelton in the second round and somehow managed to punch his way through the majority of the remaining 20 rounds unable to see out of his left eye. After this victory, his place among British boxing elites now finally established, Richmond began to showcase his skills to European royalty and in 1821, he acted as an usher at the coronation for King George IV. It cannot be stressed enough that Richmond achieved all this during a time when slavery was a very legal and very widespread practice. Bill Richmond died at his home in London in 1829 after having lived a remarkable life and was inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame in 1999. Hey guys, I hope you're doing well and have been enjoying the content. Look, I'm going to be blunt. 
I really want to do this podcasting content creation thing full time, but I can't do this without your support. And yeah, I mean financial support. So, for the price of a medium sized coffee, nah, 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 nah. For the price of a Jamaican patty, you can help to support the podcast, IG page, Facebook page, blog, YouTube account, and now my website by either joining my Patreon or making a one off donation to my PayPal account. And if that's not your thing, then you could even hop over to blackhistorybuff.com and check out the merch on there. I've got hoodies jumpers t-shirts all themed around black history so not only can you listen to your history you can rep it in your clothing as well so for the price of a small oxtail and rice you can help to bring more hidden tales from black history into the limelight So I decided to record this as a podcast episode after talking to someone on Instagram who was actually a boxing coach. He wanted to find some history to talk to his sons about. And just through talking to him, I was reminded of the story of Bill Richmond, which I've known about for some time and Tom Molyneux. And I have put together some teaching resources uh, that are a free download to go along with this podcast and the blog post that will go up on my website, which is blackhistorybuff.com. And the reason I've done that is because the whole reason I started on this learning journey for myself, and I am still learning and I will constantly be learning because I'm a lifelong learner. And this is something I'm going to be doing as long as I am able to. The reason why I started this is because I wanted to share stories with my son and I wanted to be able to control the narrative that I told my son. I wanted to make sure that he heard our history through a positive lens, through a correct lens. And it really pleasured me to be able to find this story and then to be able to create the resource and put the blog post together because now I know that the person I was talking to on Instagram is going to be able to do the same thing with his own children and pass this slice of history on that is specific to him he's a boxing coach and so now he's going to be able to go and talk to his sons about the origins and the beginnings of the sport in Britain and relate that to his ancestry and the color of his skin and the color of his children's skin and really tie all that together and for me that is a beautiful thing because we are now passing on the history passing on the legacy passing on the greatness of the people who came before us from one generation to the next generation and what I hope is that we're passing these legacies on in the right way And that's the important part of it, that we pass these things on the right way. Because every time we tell history, every time we tell a story, every time we pass on this information, we are educating not just ourselves, but we are also educating the people around us as to who we are and where we are from. And so when we tell these stories, when we talk about our history, when we pass on this information, we always have to be mindful of the narrative that we are sharing with people. Because on the one hand, we're telling ourselves our place in the world. On the other hand, when we tell these stories, we are telling people who are not like us what our place in the world is. And so for me, whenever I do each of these posts, whenever I do each of these podcasts, whenever I put anything out on Instagram, that's what I'm being mindful of. What am I saying about myself and what am I telling the world about myself? And that's why it's so important that we are able to share these stories and we are able to control the narrative and we are able to express our stories in our way and so I really hope that you've enjoyed the show today I hope you've enjoyed the podcast Um, there are more episodes uh, to listen to there are tons 
of blog posts on my Instagram account and now on my website, which is blackhistorybuff.com. There's exclusives on my Patreon account. Um, I've actually got a fully fledged business now, which you can support. So support black business because blackhistorybuff.com also has uh, clothing and I've moved into retail and I'm really just expanding the range of what I'm able to deliver in terms of content, in terms of clothing, in terms of storytelling, all with a view to being able to do this on a full time permanent basis. So if you have enjoyed anything that I've done, if you're a supporter of the show, if you're a supporter of my Instagram account, then please consider having a look at my Patreon and becoming a supporter of my Patreon or feel free to just make a one-off donation on my PayPal. There'll be a link in the description of this show or wherever you're listening to this and reach out to me on Instagram, reach out to me via email. It's info at blackhistorybuff.com. Um, reach out to me, share your stories with me. Tell me what you want to hear. Tell me what your thoughts have been about some of the things that you've learned on my site, that you've learned on my Instagram. I am very approachable. I also want to take a quick moment to thank all the listeners out here. As it stands at the moment, we have currently hit 6,000 listens and we are approaching 7,000 listens in a few short months. And I am so grateful for every single person that has allowed themselves to listen to me um, and listen to me recount these stories and have read my blog posts. I am so grateful for every single person. I cannot thank you enough uh, for the time that you have given up to join me on my learning journey and to hear the wonderful stories that abound in black history. So this is King Carus, the Black History Buff, thanking each and every one of you people out there listening for your time, for your attention and for your support. Thank you all so much. I will catch you in the next episode. You're listening to the Black History Buff Podcast. Subscribe, like and share.